Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're going to give you another daily dose of dismal Disney. This is coming from piratesandprincesses.net. Nelson Peltz and Tryon are pushing back against Disney's narrative that they want to replace Bob Iger. Yeah, I think it's really weird uh, what's going on with this proxy war because the focus seems to be on... Bob Iger and his leadership, and I never thought that was being called into question. I thought what was happening was that uh, Tryon was pushing for the two weakest links in the board to get gone so Nelson Peltz and former Disney CFO Jay Rizzullo could take a seat at the table. Again, the people they were getting rid of were the two weakest links. They're not replacing the entire board they're not calling for the ousting of Bob Iger, as far as I know. But for some reason, Disney seems to think that they're getting rid of Bob Iger. Or at least that's what they're trying to spin to the public. Uh, you know, they've been putting out all kinds of press releases and they've been talking about how, you know, they've got uh, Michael Eisner backing them up, George Lucas backing them up. Um, it's kind of crazy because I think they're lying to the public. I think they're trying to tell people like, oh, if... if if Jay Rizzullo and, and uh, Nelson Peltz come in, Bob Iger's gone and the Disney you know is going to be gone. And that's not what is going on. What is going on is they want to seat at the table because they want to have a little oversight into what is going on with Disney. Remember, Jay Rizzullo was at Disney for as much time almost as, as Bob Iger. So it's not like we've got two randos walking in from off the street, but they seem terrified to let these two guys on the board. This isn't a, a corporate takeover. This isn't, you know what I'm saying? It's it's very weird how this is being spun. And I do think they're panicking a little bit. I think the numbers are starting to come in and there is a chance that they could lose these, these board seats because they've been ramping it up. Uh, Geeky said that they're actually paying to promote the Ludwig von Drake cartoon, that really cringy cartoon telling people how to vote for the existing Disney board. And they're even making deals with Abigail Disney and George Lucas, people who historically did not get along with Bob Iger. And uh, yeah, so is there something else going on? I mean, I was speculating that maybe they were going to get in and uh, you know, possibly push to oust Bob Iger. Maybe that is what's going on, or he's just paranoid. He's paranoid. Um, I don't know. We're going to talk about it. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. No woohoos in this video. But that's okay. Go out to piratesandprincesses.net. Uh, that is Geeky's Disney blog, and you can read more Disney news, objective Disney news. Nelson Peltz and Triumph push back against Disney's narrative that they want to replace Bob Iger. During the proxy battle between Disney and Tryon and Blackwell, so it's a three-way battle, Disney repeatedly focused mostly on only one threat, the idea that was uh, that Bob Iger was in danger of replacement. Now Nelson Peltz and Tryon have put out a statement once again refuting that notion. According to Peltz, they have no desire to replace Bob Iger. And Disney continues to focus on that when they know it isn't true, yet they say nothing about board members they want to replace. Yeah, the two board members that they're looking to replace are the least qualified people on the board. You know, they're not, and then they're like, well, they're gonna they're gonna take out the diversity. Well, one of the one of the guys they're getting rid of is a white guy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. This isn't true. Disney basically doesn't want to give up any seats at all. They don't want to give up any power at all. They don't want Jay Rizzullo and Nelson Peltz on that board because they're going to hold them accountable. Try and trying to replace board members uh, Maria Elena Legmasino and Michael B.G. Froman. Bob Iger keeps complaining that Peltz and Rizzullo lack media experience. Yeah, neither of those two candidates, they are literally, if you look at the chart, they are the least qualified people on the board. And Jay Rosulo has decades of Disney experience. So that, that, that doesn't hold water. In fact, they have the fewest qualifications. She says Peltz is speaking out regarding the narrative saying Disney spends so much time in ink defending Mr. Iger while saying almost nothing about the two director candidates whose reelection trying is challenging. It's both troubling and telling this campaign is not about Mr. Iger, nor is it a referendum on his leadership. And in all events, Disney is and must be more than just one person, especially whose contract expires in less than two short years. There is something else going on. And Bob Iger 
is paranoid, obviously. Is, is he not planning on leaving? Is that what's going on? Is he just giving lip service to these potential replacements? Is he afraid if he puts somebody in, if he names a successor, that it will be challenged or that Rizzullo and Peltz will have other ideas and they will want to put somebody else in, or that just Rizzullo being there is going to challenge Bob Iger's Disney dictatorship because Rizzullo is old school. And it's so weird because Rizzullo came in under Eisner, but they got Eisner to support Iger too. They got George Lucas, all these people that had grievances with Disney for various reasons. Abigail Disney, who did a whole documentary about how awful Disney is right now. They're all coming out and singing the praises of Disney all of a sudden in lockstep, you know, and I'm sorry that George Lucas statement did not sound like something George himself would pen. It sounds like it came from his office or his wife or something. It came from someplace else. And I, I just don't think he cares, but this is weird. It's very, very weird. According to Peltz, Iger himself asked him to speak to the board on a prior occasion about shareholder sentiment in the media industry in 2019 when Disney was doing well and Peltz wasn't the enemy. In 2019, Mr. Peltz was asked by Mr. Iger to address the Disney board about shareholder sentiment in the media industry. Mr. Peltz was happy to do so, and the discussion was seemingly productive and interactive. Yeah, so Iger recognized his knowledge before, and that was the same with, with Jay Rizzullo. Like, Bob Iger sang his praises before. He was a colleague. They, they uh, you know, I think... Personally, I think Bob Iger is out of control. I think he is the Disney dictator, and I don't think he wants anybody on the board who's going to challenge him. I think the people he has on the board right now are meat puppets, you know, Mickey's meat puppets, and I think that they're going to go along with whatever he says, even if it's nonsensical, even if it's going to take the company in a, a, a wrong direction. I mean, it sounds like trying is loaded for bear. It sounds like they know going into it, like, this is what we need to do. We need to fix the movies. We need to fix the theme parks. Um, we need to cut back on the spending on the stupid Disney plus shows. Cause they're not bringing anything really. And we just did a whole video about that yesterday, about how Hollywood overspent on streaming shows that didn't bring anything to the table. And Rizzullo is going to want to revert Disney back to where it was maybe 20, 30 years ago, um, where it, it, did have a lot more cultural impact than it does now. Disney, current year Disney, is just uh, a hockey puck for the culture wars. It, it, it's like it's a very divisive company. It never used to be the case. It used to be that Disney was kind of the old standby, like everybody could agree. I mean, you might have thought it was sappy. You might have thought that, eh, you know, whatever. But Disney was like the most middle-of-the-road American entertainment company out there. They were, you know. Uh, so, it, so much so that when they released The Nightmare Before Christmas, they released it under Touchstone because they thought The Nightmare Before Christmas was too edgy for Disney. So it was released under Touchstone. And that's how they kind of got away from, from uh, anything that would damage that image. But now Disney just doesn't care. They go all in on the politics, don't they? So this is the press uh, release right here. The Trying Group, which beneficially owns over $3.5 billion of common stock in Disney, Today reaffirmed its call for change in the composition of the board of directors and the commitment of its nominees, Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo, to work constructively with the company's board and leadership team to drive long-term sustainable value creation. Triumph believes that Disney is the most advantaged consumer entertainment company in the world. Over the last one, three, and five, and ten years, however, Disney has woefully underperformed its potential and its peers, costing shareholders more than $200 billion in value. Accordingly, Tryon believes that change is needed. Ahead of the Disney annual meeting of shareholders on April 3rd, Tryon encourages all shareholders to vote for its two candidates, Mr. Peltz and Mr. Rizzullo, and to withhold support from two incumbents, uh, Maria Elena Lagomasino and Michael B.G. Froman. Again, those are the two weakest links on the board. It should be no threat to Bob Iger if they get rid of them. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is the, um, this is what they've already said, but they basically said that they burned $200 billion in capital. They said the board botched this most important job CEO succession by installing Bob Chapek in that role, seemingly without appropriate vetting or oversight. Yeah. And he dropped the ball. The board then renewed Mr. Chapek's contract just months before firing him for poor performance. Ultimately, the board had to call Bob Iger out of retirement to fill the void. And it looks to me like Bob Iger ain't going anywhere. 
He's the, he's the Phantom Menace. Like he's he is Palpatine. He's granting himself emergency powers, and his board will keep giving him emergency powers. And I would be very surprised if he. I think he's only naming potential successors or identifying potential successors for show because it is weird. If you look at the history of Bob Iger, every time there is a potential successor available, that person gets gone. Right. And I think he knew that Bob Chapek was the wrong person for the job. And he knew, he knew he could throw him out of the bus during the pandemic. But every time Tom Staggs was a potential successor, Kevin Mayer was a potential successor. Jay Rizzullo, was a potential successor. And it's very curious that they all get gone, right? Or he manipulates the situation to get them out of the way because Bob Iger, I think, wants to be the longest serving last CEO of the Walt Disney Company. He's going to freaking die in that chair in his office, you know, and then then they're, you know what I'm saying? They'll turn him into an animatronic. But that that is his thing. Like this guy wants you to remember him as being Disney more so than Walt Disney. And that that's scary because that that is not what this company is about. And uh, he's driven out so many creatives. But again, Tryon's reiterating, they're not trying to get rid of Bob Chapek. I just think that them being there is going to throw a wrench into his plan to not, not leave, in my personal opinion. In this election contest, they said Disney has emphasized that Mr. Iger is admired and respected, which we do not doubt. Try and support Mr. Iger as a candidate for the board and as CEO. The Dizzy spends so much time defending him while saying almost nothing about the two director candidates whose re-election we are challenging is both troubling and telling. The campaign is not about Mr. Iger nor a referendum on his leadership. We read that. The election is a board election, and the question before shareholders is who should serve on the board helping the company on behalf of shareholders? Um yeah, they said we have nominated two candidates, Mr. Peltz and Mr. Rizzullo, who have a shareholder mindset, extensive relevant experience, and a willingness to ask tough questions and set demanding goals. That is the problem. Mr. Peltz has served on 11 public company boards, including at some of the most respected companies in the world. Mr. Rizzullo is the former CFO of Disney and knows the business well. Disney's board seemingly does not want their help, claiming they will be disruptive and prefers instead its hand-selected incumbents an expert in foreign affairs, and an advisor to wealthy families. Isn't that telling? Isn't that telling? The people that they're like, oh, wait, you don't want the former CFO of Disney? You don't want a guy who has has come on to uh, multiple other, you know, multi-billion dollar companies' boards? You don't you don't want them? You want the, the expert in foreign affairs and the advisor to wealthy families? Isn't that weird? That those are the two people that Disney are fighting so hard to keep? It kind of tells you about where things are at. Choosing between these slates and voting for change versus more of the same is really what the election's about. Again, what is Bob Iger so afraid of? What is he afraid of? But they are really, like, dragging everybody out. This is, um, Disney put this out earlier today another statement and they're like, Oh, uh, the CEO of JP Morgan chase gives his, his endorsement, Bob Iger. Oh, George Lucas gives his endorsement. Uh, Michael Eisner gives his endorsement. This isn't about Bob Iger. Nobody's voting out Bob Iger unless that's what he's afraid of. And that's what this whole thing is probably about. He probably is afraid that he could get gone. And I don't think this guy really wants to get gone. I think Bob Iger, like I said, I think he, he's determined he's going to die in that, that chair in that office. So we'll see what happens, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later.